mail for nonprofits is still, it, it's still the big gorilla. It, digital and online social media, those are the cherries on top of your Sunday, but the real, real ice cream is with direct mail. Yeah. So take for example, that direct mail for a house list. So donors or people that you know at your nonprofit, your volunteers, uh, you know, former employees, if they left on a good, on good terms. So your house list is generally going to get a 5.1% response rate when you send mail. Now, okay. email has a 0.06% response rate. Oh so direct mail is 81 times more effective than email. And what, what makes email, though, seem to be the powerhouse is because it is fairly cheap. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying free. Yeah. It's fairly cheap. It still mm -hmm. costs you time and energy to produce those emails, mm -hmm. but you're going to expect a 0.06% response rate. So if you're trying to maximize your time and energy, direct mail is really where you want to focus. So when you say response rate, are you, are you calculating not just like the, the delivery rate and of email, the delivery and the open, but you're, you're actually talking about an execution. Yeah. So response, response rate, I'm talking very specifically about fundraising uh -huh. emails, not we want you to call your legislator, not advocacy emails. Yeah. Those are all important, but mm -hmm. when you need to raise funds, mm -hmm. direct mail is your powerhouse. That doesn't mean you should ignore email or social media. Mm -hmm. If you include those as part of a larger integrated campaign, then you can actually increase your response rates to up to 27%. So wow. a direct mail piece with a couple emails that are related to it mm -hmm. and a fantastic landing page that is optimized for donations, 27% is the, the response rate that you might be able to get. 